I can't stop thinking about 2000's jungle. It reminds me of being a 12 year old playing PS1 and PS2 and simultaneously being my first introduction to electronic music. I just didn't know it back then. Until a bunch of these playlists started popping up in my recommended feed and listening to them I'm reminded that this is exactly the sound of my childhood. And since I'm such a sucker for nostalgia, here's how to make this type of music. This all starts with setting the BPM to 170. Using a bass, plan out the notes you'll eventually use for a chord progression. For drums, I'm using a DNB break like this. Add on reverb and auto filter for the vibes. You can find all sorts of samples like these online, or you can make it from scratch by chopping up or finding different grooves from an Amen break, or any drum and bass type sounds in general. But if you're gonna be one of those producers who gets mad that I'm not currently making it from scratch, don't forget that I'm here to actually make music and not get lost in all the little details. Having said that, an ethereal pad made from scratch. I'm gonna throw it over to Streamash to explain how to make this. Let's add in like a pad or something, maybe a brass. And we're just gonna layer everything. Just a bunch of different sounds. Maybe that horn might be too much. We can do some pads from Serum. No, not that. All right, that's cool. Then you can go like pitch, pitch it down. One. Okay, that's pretty good. And then also, literally have that sample play oh just wait okay and then like a vocal a vocally one vapor Ooh. Like... then you loop and resample it and then you put it into another sampler turn it to sampler set it to the right root note let's do our chords different sample start maybe I had the wrong chord there <laughs> thanks stream ash next thing you can add is some vocal chops and some type of melody to give the song its character. For this song, I used a guitar, but you can literally use whatever instrument you're feeling that day. And altogether, this sounds like so you got an album done, you're thinking of releasing it. Let me give you a tip. The truth is you might have a bad time if nobody knows who you are. And sadly, people's attention spans are literally non-existent these days. And you'd be better off releasing one song as a single each month for an entire year. That way, you're always on your listeners' minds and each release has the potential to find even more fans. And if that sounds expensive, it might be. Depending on the distribution service you use, some charge up to $30 per song, which equals out to like $360 a year if you're gonna do this monthly release schedule. But this video sponsor, DistroKid, is different. If you wanted to follow this exact same release schedule using DistroKid, you'd only be paying $23. And that's not per song, that's for the entire year. That's right, DistroKid lets you upload unlimited songs for only $23 a year. So if you've been watching my videos and are starting to make some absolute bangers, you could even release twice a month and your wallet wouldn't even break a sweat. On top of that, all of the royalties are 100% yours. I've used DistroKid for years for my own releases and they've been kind enough to sponsor this video so go check them out. And to sweeten this deal a little more, get your first year even cheaper with my VIP link. Don't get me wrong, I love the process of writing albums and having a full body of work, but until your fans are begging for one, 
better to do smaller projects first, get your foot in the door, and then release your masterpiece. Thank you DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. And all together, Copy and paste, except change the progression a bit so that the first two bars are only made up of one note and or chord. Bring in the chime sample and either open up or remove the auto filter from the breakbeat. A hi-hat. And a ride that reverses into itself. Layer in a deep kick to add some punch with the kicks from your break. Now here is where we add in the little uh, boom, boom. You know how the, <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? In a wavetable synth like Serum or Vital, make an LFO in this shape using these settings. Set oscillator A to a sine wave, keep everything at default, and drag LFO1 over to chorus pitch. If your line looks like this, just hold Alt and Shift and click so that it looks like this instead. After testing out some notes on the lower end of the keyboard, adjust the chorus pitch until you can hear a nice click, but also the note at the same time. Around there is nice. You can also adjust rate to do that, but. Um, I thought you didn't want to get into a sound design or rabbit hole. Quiet. As long as I know what I'm focused on making, we're good to go. More experimentation where you're just turning knobs and hoping for the best are better left to sound design sessions, but I'm making this because I know exactly what I need in the moment. Now, using the bass progression that you mapped out earlier, you can write in a bass line that bounces between octaves, fifths, and the second. It helps to write these notes while the drums are playing so you can find pockets of where to sneak the notes in. Hear how it matches the rhythm and flow of the drum beat. It also helps to listen to a lot of jungle to get a better idea of how the flow of these bass lines go. And all together, That's obviously sounding a little bit too repetitive, so how do we switch it up while keeping the vibe? This is where it leans more into a bit more breakcore territory, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just call this the drop. For this, we're finding another drum and bass break, but with the drums a little bit more intense. This one's literally just the almond break. But we're going to chop it up a little bit more so that the snares hit more on a break beat. And that rhythm sounds like. Next step is to select all of these samples that you chopped up, open up the sample editor and switch the warp mode to beats. Change the transient mode to the line here, which means they get chopped off as soon as the transient plays, and we're gonna drag this line down to tighten up the drum beat. Around there is good. As the drum beat progresses, you want it to get a little bit more intense. So during strategic points, I've actually duplicated the snares and kicks on a fast grid to get some glitchier sounds. Copy over the 808, but change the notes to a minor or relative minor of the song. If you don't know what I said, watch this clip from this video. But essentially we're darkening the song and anchoring it to the root of the minor scale by putting the 808 there. That's gonna sound like. Compared to the chord progression before. Hear how this one's more uplifting and this one's a bit darker. 
And you might be saying, Ash, those notes are pretty high. Well, don't worry. That's because we're leaving some room for the sub bass, which is also going to be anchored to the root minor. Now this sub bass has put it on arpeggiator so that it plays eighth notes and it's juiced up by the spice rack so you can feel it and hear it at the same time. We're going to be doing the same thing with the pad, copying it over, but making a minor chord out of it, once again based off of the minor root note. Put the same chord onto a choir and can't forget the super saw. For this section, I really wanted some aggression. This varies from different breakcore genres, and for this, I just picked a loud electric guitar. And playing this all together, While this feels like it's missing an element, that's because this song was actually meant to have a vocal from someone who's just as nostalgic as this beat makes me. So to hear how I use this with mega pop star Olivia Rodrigo's vocal, check out this video. Now go make some bangers. <laughs> 